thanks everyone for coming in tonight, walking out uh, to this meeting and experiencing the temperatures. I was thinking maybe no one will come, but um, the, the neighborhood is wonderful. Everyone always comes, and, and we appreciate it a lot. Um, I uh, I wanted to let everyone know uh, if you haven't you know discerned this from reading the agenda yet, there aren't any um, voting items tonight on the agenda. Uh, there were some. Uh, zoning and licensing issues, and I think uh, Victor will speak about them. But uh, the the, um, the process for uh, NURA is that if the executive committee, if they go through ZLC, and the executive committee deems them, you know, relatively benign and, and non-controversial, they can they can get a letter of no objection without coming in front of the group to get a formal vote. And we uh, were lucky enough to get, a, or unlucky enough to get a number of them that passed that criteria. And Victor, again, um, will, will tell you during his ZLC report about those, uh, those, I think there were three items that we're not going to vote on. Um, and you know, just so you know, everyone can hear it and see why they were deemed non-controversial. I would say this was by a, a change in our bylaws that the, the the membership voted on the executive committee can do this, uh, but I always want to hear feedback from people because you know sometimes we think things are not controversial, but we try to have a very broad definition of what can be controversial. For instance, any liquor licensing, any roof deck, all of those immediately go into that. Well, they could be controversial, huh? so uh, but but you know hearing from you guys to make sure that we're uh, keeping the attenuation right on our on our tuner um, uh, is. Um, is important to us. And, and that was a little bit of a foreshadowing for one change in the agenda. Um, unfortunately, David Kubiak, who was going to lead the last uh, session, which was our community letter writing info session, was unable to make it to tonight's meeting. Um, so because we have a little bit of time opened up, um, we have uh, um, asked uh, our friends from Extinet, who are the wireless provider uh, but they, they're not a provider, but they're a company that will put that that is uh, trying to get a license to uh, put some w low power wireless transceivers on uh, various utility poles, etc. And we are going to uh, give them a chance to tell uh, us about that, and we can have a little Q and A on that. So that's sort of a, a last minute agenda change. Um, I will say the, the community letter writing info session, even though it's, it seems to keep getting ping pong balled around, is something that we feel is important. And if people in, in the audience think, well, we really need this and we really need to have it soon, um, you know, the, the, uh, the executive committee would be more than happy to schedule a special session to do that, to do that or even a letter writing workshop if we want to do that. Um, I will. Review a little bit why we even have why we even propose to have that uh, letter writing info session, and that is because as uh, as I'm sure everyone who's been coming to these meetings knows, the uh, Boston Redevelopment Authority has been um, trying to um, push through a 10-year extension for a number of the urban renewal zones that uh, that they currently manage. Um, urban <coughs> renewal zones are are areas where special laws or lack of laws apply, and depending on how you look at it. And the BRA uh, very much wants to keep the status quo on these urban renewal zones. The weird thing is that the places where the city needs urban renewal no longer align with these zones, so they're sort of artifacts from the past. Um, none of the development in the Seaport District or East Boston or South Boston is in an urban renewal zone. So the, the alignment between the zones and where the development's actually happening no longer works, <laughs> yet the uh, BRA really is pushing to get these uh, zones renewed. Um, a number of, uh, of folks, including most of the, the, uh, the folks in this association, uh, many of the other resident associations have found that the, the urban renewal zones really are artifacts from the past, probably should be sunsetted as soon as possible. We, we don't want to, we don't want to necessarily create a, you know, a, a uh, contortions in the city and, and disrupt business, we think that a, an orderly shutdown is appropriate. The BRA feels that the status quo on a 10-year extension is the only way to go, which is, in my view, opinion, humble opinion, sort of nuts, but uh, uh, nonetheless, um, a number of resident associations, including ours, 
have written letters opposing urban renewal zone, zone extensions. We voted on one of those. Um, uh, the, the associations together as ADCO, the Alliance of Downtown Civic Organizations, has also um, uh, voted on, each of the members has voted on and signed and, and, and presented a letter to, um, to the mayor and to the city council saying, we're opposed and you know, while we're open to some sort of sunsetting period, period uh, 10 year extension just out of the question. Um, Phil um, and Phil's association, and Nick uh, was was a signatory to that as well. So uh, all of our, um, I think your, uh, um, all of our association, resident associations, uh, you know, in ADCO, um, seem to to have aligned to feel that this is not a, a great move. And um, some uh, members asked, well, what can we do? Can we write letters? I mean, the associations writing letters is great, but can we write individual letters? And we said, sure, that's, of course, yes, always. And I should, uh, I should emphasize that. Anytime there's an issue here that you feel strongly about, you should write to your city councilor. You should you know, write to the mayor, uh, write to the mayor's office. I'll introduce uh, all the, the people, that, that some of whom are here, that you should write to. But um, I, I think it's very important that uh, folks um, uh, you know, do write letters, and, and we've decided to help people to write this set of letters. Um, and uh, <clears throat> the only thing I'm going to say more is there is a section on our website. If you go to it, go to our homepage, just beneath where the agenda is, you'll see a, a place you can click for more information on uh, how to write one of these letters. And we have a little helpful kit of information, including a list of the people you can send emails to, as well as some of the letters that have been written by other organizations that you could use the samples if you wanted to, if you wanted to cut and paste a little bit, or, or just read them and then be um, motivated to come up with your own text. That's great, <coughs> however you want to do it. But we've come up with that little resource center. So um, in lieu of having this last agenda item, we'll just stay with our little resource center. But as I said before, if any of you feel strongly that we should have a special session or something else to help people write the letters, just let any of us know. Um, so with that, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to um, co convene the meeting by doing the normal uh, warning to people that, uh, uh, and, uh, and shout out to uh, Matt that we are being recorded. Uh, NorthEndWaterfront.com is recording this meeting, so be careful of what you say. People should be saying that to me, actually, uh, because, uh, because it's being recorded. Um, I also wanted to uh, mention that we, we have a number of uh, civic leaders, uh, people who work either in, are elected or work in the mayor's office, et cetera, and I'm hoping that we can, from Maria to the rest of the room, uh, make everyone could introduce themselves. Hi, everybody. Maria Lanza, mayor's office and neighborhood services. I just have a couple of sure, That's okay. Um, you might have noticed Evisos is doing some work on Prince and Tom and the street. We'll be there weekdays, 9.30 to 3.30. Of course, we'll ask you to stick to the easy. Stand up. Oh. Like I said, the work will last approximately six to eight weeks. It started on January 27th. If you have any questions regarding this work, you can contact John Howey, who is the Community Relations Specialist at Evisos. His number is 617. 541-7020 or reach out to me and I can get you in touch with him. Um, also, at Imagine Boston 2030 update, we're going to have some community workshops to learn more about Imagine and share your ideas on Imagine Boston 2030. So the first one coming up is next month. It's Thursday, March 10th. There'll be one at East Boston, which is from 6.30 to 8.30 at the East Boston Social Center on 68 Central Ave. Also one in Roxbury, same night, 6 o'clock, 8 o'clock p.m. at Madison Park High School. Uh, Monday, March 14th, from 6 o'clock to 8 o'clock p.m., there'll be one in Dorchester at the 8 and 42 Charles Street, one in Mattapan at the Mildred Ave School at 5 Mildred Ave. And then Monday, March 21st, from 6 to 8 p.m., there'll be one in Dorchester at St. Peter's School, 278 Bowden Street, and one in Charlestown, Bunker Hill Community <coughs> College. 250 Rutherford Ave. The last one is Tuesday, March 22nd, also from 6 to 8 p.m. in Chinatown at the Quinton School, 885 Washington Street, and at Dorchester in the Royalty School, 1 Water Street. I also have a community meeting notice. Um, the construction team from the Elliott School is coming out to 
this room on Thursday, February 25th at 6 o'clock p.m. here at the Nazaro Center. We're going to be updating all things Elliott, so an update on the North Bend Street School project as well as the Elliott School at 585. If you have any questions or concerns, you can contact me. I can get you in touch with BPS. And on a lighter note, um, the Mayor's Winter Children's Festival is coming up this Tuesday, February 16th. 10 o'clock to 4 o'clock at the Boston Common. There'll be a race down Snowzilla, which is a three-story high inflatable toboggan slide. Photos with inside of the snow globe, free ice skating at the Frog Pond, and other free activities. So please check that out. Okay. Fantastic. Thank, Thank you. you very much for you. I see Kathy. Hi everyone, I'm Alana Olson from Counselor Anissa Sabi George's office and I didn't come with anything to talk about but I'm excited to hear what you guys are going to say and catch up with you guys about Women Renewal and Licensing. Thank you for coming to our meeting, that's yeah. great. Fantastic. We love our counselors to, to, to send recommendations. Fantastic. Who else is of our government? Okay, great. Park shopping spaces? Quickie? Not a lot going on in the parks right now, unfortunately. Um, but we are getting ready for um, a great spring season. Uh, there are two meetings coming up. Uh, uh, one is the Parks and Open Spaces Committee meeting. That's going to be meeting on Tuesday, March 1st at 7 p.m. at the Mariners House. If you're interested in the uh, tree inventory that we're going to be doing this spring, um, which inventory the trees in the North End to make sure that we know what we have and uh, the quality and the condition of the trees, um, we're going to be doing that in the spring. You can attend that meeting. Um, I just want to let people know that in mid-April, the Friends of Christopher Columbus Park Horticulture Committee gets together and works on the roses in the Rose Garden. If you're interested in volunteering for that, you can contact me and I'll give you an uh, email address to get all the information for that. Um, and on April 6th, again, over uh, April 6th, there's going to be a walk around the trees and plants in Christopher Columbus Park by one of the original uh, designers of the park. That's uh, free and open to everyone in the, uh, in the city. Uh, and more information will be available on the Friends of Christopher Columbus Park website about that. Um, Great. Thank you. Um, public safety, please. Good evening, everyone. Great to see such a good turnout in the buildings. The most recent North End Public Safety Monthly Meeting was held back on Thursday, close to four. There were two arrests in the 30-day period leading up to last Thursday's monthly public safety meeting. The first of which occurred on January 12th, approximately 1.30 in the morning. It's a combination of a burglary slash breaking and entering type incident. Officer Pasciuto arrested a gentleman who had in his possession a Jimmy bar, and he also had in his possession credit cards and checkbooks other people's names on them. So this was someone that seemed to be a suspicious character and they viewed him fairly well. Yeah, they found him. But they basically, what we were told is that they were, there were two gentlemen and one of them I think was found, if not both of them, sitting on the steps of, I think it was on Michelangelo Place. And they were watching him kind of going back and forth, I think right around where all the cars were parked on the street. And I believe they had reasonable suspicion to stop them and say, what are you doing here? And they found him. What I mentioned in their possession. The second of the two arrests occurred at 585 Commercial Street outside of the school. The ad was placed on social media by the Boston police to sell two grams of a drug known as Molly for $120. And the gentleman responded to the ad, came all the way up here from Rhode Island, so that was about 45 miles from here, depending on where in Rhode Island you are. And you actually offered to sell the undercover police officer um, some mushrooms as well. So he was sent by and arrested by the undercover police officer. There was one robbery. Moving on. There was one robbery that took place on January 14th at approximately 9, 10 in the evening. It was on the Greenway near North and Cross Streets. The victim was grabbed by a gentleman. The victim elbowed the gentleman, but the suspect was able to flee with the victim's wallet. Unfortunately, at that time, the victim was not able to identify or provide any type of identification of the suspect. 
There were three larcenies. One took place at 15 Noise Place. There was a dispute between two roommates. One of them allegedly took the other's property. The second one took place on January 16th at approximately 4.45 in the afternoon at 22 Cooper Street. A resident at that residence was away between 7 and 11 in the morning. But when they returned to their unit, they discovered their modem was missing. Uh, the thought was that it was possibly stolen by painters that were working at that time. 24 Cooper Street at 2.30 p.m. I apologize, I don't have the date on that. A UPS package containing a Canada Goose coat was stolen. Uh, you may know those coats have a retail value of at least seven to $900 and a resale value of about $1,300. Note to everyone, please, I know it's common sense, but still, it's worth saying. If you're, if you're expecting any type of package, even if it's a gift that you know someone is sending you, make arrangements, but don't try to avoid them from leaving on the doorstep, and not just during the holiday season. This happens all the time, and it's not just one of our Almost done. A couple other issues. Uh, it was pretty quiet in the last month regarding loud party calls. Uh, once again, call 911 to report anything that's loud and or disruptive, party incidents, et cetera, et cetera. Um, according to Officer Teddy Boyle, our community officer, the Police Athletic League they put in a request for a youth Killington Vermont ski trip from mid to late March. That's something that kids don't think. Rich Grealish, who works for, or did work at least, for Suffolk University, he has been replaced by a police sergeant for the Thursday through Saturday evening ride-alongs that take place in the North End from approximately midnight to about 3.45 in the morning. Last but not least, as always, unless it's specified, otherwise specified, public safety meeting is always held every month, first Thursday of the month, in this room at 6 p.m., which means next month's meeting would be March. Fantastic. Well, thank you. Oh, and, and those of you who are as entertained as, as, uh, as I am by the report, you can get more of it by going online, looking at our interactive crime map so that you can see displayed <laughs> over our neighborhood and over the whole city where all of these fun crimes are happening. I don't mean to make too much of a joke of, of crime, but uh, but when you hear about uh, you know some of the stuff that you mentioned, you know, oh, let's 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 respond to the Molly ad. Um, you can't help but chuckle. All right. Um, so um, that's our uh, that almost concludes our reports. I promised that Victor was going to tell us a little bit about what we're not voting on. Yes, yes. So that's uh, your your I want to add something to the president's report, sure. which which is your 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 comments on the letter writing campaign. And I want to add something perhaps optimistic. Um, there was a hearing, no, a a working session of the, of the council uh, on Tuesday, and today uh, I had a, sorry, Michelle Wu wrote. Her, uh, her weekly report on the doings of the council. And under Urban Renewal, she says, most councilors seemed unconvinced about the need for a 10-year renewal of the exact same powers granted under the original plans, with no adjustments of plan boundaries, timelines, or specifics after the last year of public process. The item will remain in the Planning and Development Committee for further discussion before the April 2016 expiration. So that means that the council perhaps is leaning in the direction we're leaning, and that perhaps letters, uh, if they are flooded with them, will help. Well, letters can do that. Yeah. They can definitely get them over the goalpost. <clears throat> and again, I want to remind everyone, we do have that resource on our website. Take a look at it. And we'll put more stuff up there. If you guys would like to see templatized letters, you know, or think, start, a starter letter or something like that, uh, just let us know. We can put more stuff up there. But there's a lot of stuff up there right now you should check out. Thanks. The three items that are not being voted on, which is the LC items, uh, the first was 57 Fleet Street, uh, a rooftop mechanical unit, four feet by four feet by one foot uh, thick, uh, in the back of the roof with a screen in front of it. Uh, and I'll explain to you why it's not being voted on. The next item was 280 to 290 Commercial Street, the parking lot next to the Four Winds, who is applying for a their extension of his license to operate an outdoor public paid parking lot. Uh, and the third one was 74 to 76 Commercial Street, Jim and Francine Cannon. That was the sloping roof where there was a 
the balcony cut into the uh, into the roof that had been leaking for years, and they decided to close it. So it ends up being a, a room, but it's uh, in the sloping roof. Um, as Ford uh, explained uh, three, four, five or more years ago, in response to the business community, which was uh, complaining, why do we have to go through two steps for Dura, the ZLC meeting and then a voting meeting, uh, we adopted a uh, process with the vote of the membership uh, authorizing it, which is, and I'll read from a sample letter, the vote was taken pursuant to authority delegated to the executive committee by Dura's voting membership, permitting the executive committee to send a no objection letter to the board without a vote of the membership in cases where an appeal has not raised concerns among neighbors, <coughs> the relief requested should not cause significant impact to the community, and the Zoning Licensing and Construction Committee has recommended the action. And that happened in these three cases. Uh, I do want to say that I still believe that the two-step uh, procedure is, is a good one, both for the business community and for the residents, because it starts with, that is the ZLC meeting, it, we sit around the table, it's not a presentation, uh, in a perhaps adversarial setting, where neighbors and the proponent can talk about the, uh, the proposal and there are issues <coughs> sometimes worked out prior to the voting meeting. It helps uh, both the residents and the businesses, or not necessarily businesses, but uh, residents who want to do something property. So that's the, uh, the no objection to our um, voted by the executive committee. Otherwise, uh, well, today there are no votes, and that's the reason. Uh, CLC items to come, uh, 290 North Street, La Capella D&D, &D, and I see uh, the uh, new owner, of, no, new owners of La Capella D&D um, have applied to the, to the uh, uh, to ISD to change what is now a B and B and what one residential unit to four residential units. Three would be sold as condos, and the one remaining would be owner occupied by a couple in the back of the room. And that will be on the CLC uh, uh, meeting on February twenty third. And perhaps. That's not a vote of no uh, at the March meeting. Uh, the other item is two smell in place uh, to reduce from a three family to a two family, uh, however, to expand the building, to add one story to the height and to extend the basement. That will also be uh, on the agenda for February 23rd. Um, Attorney Toscano was representing both of, of those applications, so if there are any questions prior to this meeting, uh, contact uh, Attorney Toscano. And I think that is the CLC reports. Thank you, sir. Report. Fantastic. Hi. Hi. Good. Okay, please, uh, yes, introduce yourself and announce. Hi, everybody. Um, as a lot of you know, I'm Maria Popolo with Senator Petroselli's office, uh, now former Senator Petroselli. Um, he resigned effective at the very end of January. And so as of now, I've just been kind of making the rounds uh, to the last of my meetings um, to, t to let everybody know that we are, of course, uh, no longer operating as an office. Uh, I'm still up at the State House for the time being. Uh, a transition will be underway, and um, there is an upcoming election set. Um, so as of right now, the, the office is still operating um, just with us in it. So we don't have a set of <coughs> two. So as of right now, if you need anything kind of done legislatively at the State House, we recommend you speak to Brett Michaelis' office. Um, and beyond that, you know, your city, uh, your city liaisons. Um, so anything additionally to go through them. He sends his best and says thank you as well for everything. He will be popping by. He's making his rounds to all the meetings as well. Um, to send his best, so um, for, on my behalf, you know, thank you everybody for always being so supportive, and of me, of course, as well, so thank you. 
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Actually, I want to mention one thing. Um, I, I, you may recall one of the candidates for the special election to fill Senator Petrocelli's seat uh, introduced himself at this meeting last week. I was expecting that at least one, possibly more, were going to come tonight, but I just want to... Is one is here? <laughs> oh. Yeah, she just, she just walked in. Well, okay, great. So. Oh, not to interrupt. Sorry about that. No, that's right. this, is, this is the time when I... Yeah, I, I'd, uh, I want to give everyone who's running for that seat an opportunity to introduce themselves. Just so, just say who you are and why you're running. Oh, great. Right. That's literally <laughs> walking right in the right side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm Diana Huang. Um, I um, am running for the state Senate seat, obviously, as you all know. Uh, I worked, I started at the State House 10 years ago and have spent 10 years working within the system to change the system. I um, have spent my entire career working on behalf of women, immigrants, and working families. Um, grew up um, as a daughter of, of uh, immigrants who struggled to stay in the middle class. And that feeling of instability, that feeling of insecurity, that always stayed with me. My parents tried to hide that from me and my brother, how worried they were about you know, the, their next pay paycheck. And, um, but we knew, and so I think that's, that's something that's always stayed with me. And um, I feel very connected with this district because of it. Um, obviously, it's very first district for the East Boston, for Vera, to go that in Chinatown, over the Cambridge. But I think that, that feeling of economic insecurity is something that we all understand. Um, and I think the person who represents the seat should really have lived that experience. And um, that's something that I would hear about. So, so thank you so much for. Thank you for um, You want to say something very quick, Mr. Mark? Okay. Sorry, there were two things that I failed to mention my public safety update. There was a lot of the local press paid, or a lot of attention paid to the Rouge Five, otherwise known as the Turner Kings group that wanted to hold so we get together, not just in the North End, but all around the world, basically in many countries. So they had the Boston Police Department had main clothes, police officers in attendance at the Prado. It was on Saturday, right? yeah. and even though they had announced on their website, the Greek website that is, that they were canceling uh, their events, um, about 15 so-called counter protesters showed up, and then they left shortly after realizing that indeed the event had been canceled. <laughs> And last but not least, the twice a year homeless census that the Boston Police Department undertakes. Um, they do it in January and August. And they just completed the January one in mid-January. I know Mayor Walsh was walking around as well, speaking to some homeless. Uh, the, the count for District A1 was 53 homeless people, down from about 72 or 73 at this time last year, three of whom were in the northern area. Thank, thank you. And, and it's funny when Robin showed me the, uh, the 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 web thing. You know, she someone sent a link about what was the name of the group? The Return of King. The Return of King. Yeah, I mean, you know, and I don't know who knows about that group, but it's a pretty radical group. It's a scary group. And I, I my immediate reaction was, well, this is this must be a like your Molly thing. This this must be a sting operation. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. But you know. It wasn't. Um, it was real, um, but it didn't happen. Um, so we're going to get to the meeting. Into the meeting proper. Um, we're, we actually have um, a reduced agenda. So we're going to have three presentations. Um, Leslie Horn of Ruff is going to give us an update, and and then um, friends um, uh, from FEMA, uh, Michelle Crow, Nick Des Des Cesar, and Nathan Lexina. Did I get it? Okay. And others from um, FEMA are, are going to um, talk about the new revised flood maps. They have come armed so at the end of the meeting. You can go up and check your address to see if if you are in a new revised flood plan. So that, and there will be an insurance impact if you are. So you want to know about it. Uh, and then we're going to talk to the Extinet folks. And again, if folks have specific questions about community letter writing that they want to come up and talk to me about, for anyone uh, up here at the end of the meeting, I'm happy to uh, take questions one-on-one. -on -one.